Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and on this episode we're walking in Memphis. On this walking in Memphis the topic is going to be CWA from March 12th 1983 just before my sixth birthday. I will say a couple things. I do pick these shows. I have a couple playlists that I've found. CWA which has about 400 videos, 400 shows, and USWA playlist that has about two to three hundred shows. And when I pick these, I just go to a random number generator. Whatever number it gives me, that's what I go with and I roll with it. This is a very incomplete show. I decided early on if I do pick an incomplete one, we're going to go with what survived. So I will say this. There is no actual matches on this show. There are highlights of matches. This is mostly highlights and promos. The video itself is roughly 20 minutes long. So if you're looking for in-ring, I wouldn't recommend watching this. If you want to see some great promos, I would watch it. With that being said, if you haven't seen my videos before, I grade everything on a 1 to 5 scale. 1 being the worst, 5 being the best. For Walking in Memphis, we consider the entire segment, so basically commercial to commercial. Let's jump right in. We start off with Lance Russell, and he announces that his co-commentator this week is going to be Steve-O. No, not Steve-O from Jackass. Steve-O was a wrestler in the 80s here. He had a hand injury that was given to him, which we're going to see here in a minute, by the Sheep Herders. And so he's going to join in commentary while he heals from his injury. From that, we go right into a highlight package. We get highlights of Dutch Mantel beating Jacques Ray Rougeau in a Loser Leaves Town match. We get Jerry Lawler beating Austin Idol, which is one of the, one of the most famous feuds in Memphis wrestling history. We get the Sheep Herders, who at this point were Jonathan Boyd and Luke Williams, a.k.a. Bushwhacker Luke, going up against uh, Steve-O and Bill Dundee. This is where Steve-O got his hand injury, or re-injured, because he had already came back from a hand injury. They don't really say who won that part. They just kind of show, after the bell, the attack on Steve-O injuring his hand. Then we get highlights of the fabulous ones, Stan Lane and Steve Kern, against... Uh, Jesse Barr and Adrian Street, who were managed by Jim Cornette. The Fabulous Ones win that one. And then we get into highlights of Stagger Lee, at this point being played by Coco Ware, going up against beautiful Bobby Eaton. So we have highlights of all those matches. Pretty good stuff. We go back into the, into the studio. The segment comes, we have Jim Cornette come out with adorable Adrian Street and Jesse Barr. Uh, Jesse the Enforcer Bar, he goes by at this point. Jesse's a guy um, who for a lot of years I hated because he was Jimmy Jack Funk. And I disliked him for being a fake funk. A lot, a lot like the reasons people dislike Lance Von Erich for being a fake Von Erich. I changed my opinion on Jesse Barr when I got to be on a, a show called the Internet Wrestling Express that's since I, it's disappeared, you can't find the any of the recordings anywhere but it was a fun show and the the guy that ran it was a guy that went by the mask tweeter if you watched my videos way back in the day i did some challenges with him we collaborated he had an interview with terry funk and terry being one of my favorite wrestlers he allowed some of us to call in and ask terry a question i had questioned him about jesse Barr, jimmy jack funk and i know i'm this is a has very little to do, but I like to get these stories out here. I think they're interesting, too. I asked him how he felt about there being a fake funk brother, and he basically endorsed it. He gave, he told me, you know, I love Jesse Barr. Jesse's a good guy. He's a great wrestler. I had no problem with him calling himself a funk. He said, much like the Andersons, none of them are really Andersons, except I think Gene. Gene might be really an Anderson. And it kind of changed my opinion. If the guy, if one of the funks can endorse him, I let my hatred of the guy go. So now when I watch Jesse bar i think more favorably of back to the interview Cornette is fantastic if you've seen jim Cornette over the last 30 years you know he's one of the great talkers of all time adrian street although he stumbles here he gets his point across and makes a lot of sense much like i'm stumbling through these if you watch my videos i stumble through most of them jesse Barr, solid promo here for all that the highlights the inner Introduction of Steve-O being a commentator, the interview with Cornette, Adrian Street, and Jesse Barr. I'm giving that segment a five. Now coming off of that, we get, it's obviously edited because they show that coming after commercial we would see the sheep herders, but we definitely don't. We get another promo with, this time with Jimmy Hart and the first family. He has beautiful Bobby Eaton and the Brewers brother, or yeah, the Brewers brothers, not the later Brewers brothers, which would be the Harris twins. This was Pork Chop Cash and Mad Dog Boyd which actually was the second incarnation of him because initially the Dream Machine 
was part of the group with Pork Chop. I digress. This again is fantastic. If you only know Jimmy Hart, and I know I say this when he comes up, if you only know him from his WWE or WCW run, you really haven't seen Jimmy Hart at his best. This is a 20 minute video. Go back and watch this. Watch these promos here. Watch what these guys are doing. Cornette, Jimmy Hart. This is ring psychology from a manager 101. If you want to be a pro, pro wrestling manager, even now in 2022, you can study these guys and you can learn from them. Porkchop Cash gets on the mic. I love Porkchop Cash. I think he's awesome. I loved his interview style. Porkchop Cash reminds me of a lot of guys I grew up around, so I gravitate to a guy like Porkchop. Bobby Eaton talks here, and a lot of people talk about how Bobby Eaton's not great on promos. He's not, I mean, he's not good compared to Jimmy Hart or Jim Cornette earlier in the show, but he was fantastic for this. He made, what he did here worked within the confines of what he was doing. That promo is all they show for this segment, so I'm giving that one a five as as well i thought it was really good now from that we go into our next segment we get a promo with jerry the king waller superstar bill dundee and stagger lee aka coco Ware at the time this was good as well i mean what are you going to say about jerry waller probably the biggest star in the history of memphis bill dundee arguably the second biggest star in the history of memphis wrestling you can put him up there with jackie fargo with Austin Idol, I mean, he's right there in the conversation. And Stagger Lee, Coco, he connected with the fans so well. Even in the Stagger Lee gimmick, most of the time they're playing the Stagger Lee song and he's dancing around the ring high-fiving kids. I mean, that's what he was there for. That Coco made a fantastic heel when he was a heel, but when he was a face, he would bring the kids to the show. And there's a lot to be said about that. A lot of people dislike Coco, don't like his run, don't like his Birdman stuff in WWE. But go back and watch those. Watch how the kids go crazy. You gotta imagine that those kids, me being one of them, would have went to their parents and said, in my case, WWF is coming to the Philadelphia Spectrum next week. I want to go see Coco. Can we please get tickets to go see Coco? I guarantee that was a conversation that happened in, in everybody's house that was a wrestling fan in the 80s that watched WWF. And even in Memphis days, the kids that were watching Memphis probably were begging their their families to please can we go get tickets for the Mid-South Coliseum can we go to the taping I want to see Coco because he had that connection and there's a lot of wrestlers that downplay that that don't want to live up to the connection with the little kids he always did I thought that he was awesome at that last but not least the final thing of the show we see the fabulous ones Stan Lane and Steve Kern and the interesting thing here is how bad Stan Lane talks about Jim Cornette knowing where he's going to be later in his career where he's going to be wrecking mostly for being managed by Jim Cornette. Another really good promo with two really good talkers. For that segment, the two promos together, I'm giving that a five. Overall, I know it's just all promos with a little bit of wrestling highlights, but I think it was a very interesting watch. I definitely would recommend anyone that wants to know how to cut a wrestling promo to go watch this video, and it is in the description here. With all that being said, I thought it was all fantastic. I'm giving the whole thing a five. I really enjoyed myself watching this. If you made it all the way to the end, let's smash that like button, share the video, subscribe if you haven't. If you made it here, let's put Stagger Lee in the comments for Coco. Coco, you're awesome. If you ever, in the off chance that you ever watch this, just know that at least I appreciated your work and I thought you were absolutely amazing. With all that being said, my name is George Coles and we've been walking in Memphis.